Hi, and welcome back to KNC Taxidermy. Thank you for joining us again. I hope you've enjoyed all our previous videos and more to come. Today we're going to do an instructional video on how to prep your hide for tanning. We've taken it out of the freezer, we've rinsed it out, kind of cleaned it up, got all that old yucky blood and any debris, leaves, sticks, anything like that that would be on the cape from field dressing it. Okay, so this is a raw, fresh, well, it's not fresh. I got this one out of the freezer. So, but it's already been caped out. As you can see, it's got the Y incision on the, it's already, the antlers have already been moved, removed. And now what we've got to do is turn out the lips, the nose, and the eyes, and the ears for the tanning process. Because those are, that we want to make sure that tan penetrate, penetrates well in all those spots because those are what we're going to be tucking into the form when we go to mount. And uh, we also want to make sure we do a good job of turning out our ears because, of course, we bondo them. And the base of this one, I can already see from inspecting it, you can see whoever field drace cut the base of that ear completely off. So that's going to have to be, they cut that one way too short. And they did on the other side as well. There's that base of the ear is completely gone on, on this particular buck. So that's not a good thing. Um, that's going to cause a lot of, I'm going to have to sew this back up. And then with clay, though, when I go to attach it to the form, um, I'm really going to have to put a lot of clay in there and build that back up. So... That's already something that I'm noticing because I, I want to kind of inspect before so I can let the customer know. That's important too. I want to let the customer know if I see anything that may cause a problem down the road with their mount, I want to make sure I communicate that to them um, so before it becomes a big problem. And especially, you know, I want to check it for any kind of slippage. I want to make sure, smell it. Is it smell? Is it fresh? Did they bring it straight out of the field to me? Did they field dress it? Bring it straight to me? Was it in the freezer? You can tell by the smell and the looks of it pretty much um, how how they cared for it before it was brought to you. And these are all things you want to take notes of because these may be issues you have to take up with the owner of this deer because sometimes if it ha if it wasn't handled well in the field or prior to it being brought to you these are things you're going to have to let them know about because this cape may not they might not have taken good care of it or let it go too long if it, if it was really warm that day and the bacteria has already got to it and that and it stinks to high heaven and that hair is already starting to slip you can't use that cape and if they still want it mounted, then you may have to recape. You may have to get another um, another deer cape. And if they've got another one in the freezer, you can ask them if they want you to use that one. They need to bring that to you because you're just not going to be able to use it. So these are all things you want to look for, smell for, inspect um, to make sure the condition of the cape can even be used before before you even continue on with this. Now a lot of it. Uh, like I can, I have this one in, in the fridge overnight after I rinsed it out. So I can smell, it just kind of has a smell of like old blood to me, which is fine. It's not smelling of any kind of rot or anything like that. And I know it's in good condition because, um, it's been in my possession, but, uh, I just want to make sure, and this is another good time to make sure inspect for any big holes or anything like that or big chunks of meat uh, that may need to be removed they did a pretty good job I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it inside out and and I'm gonna take some time to inspect it all right so I've inspected my cape and other than like a couple 
like a cup, like a bullet hole. It really looks good, and they've done a really good job in the field getting any chunks of meat off. It looks, it looks really well. Uh, now it won't. It it's raw, so it's really pink. There's still, you know, some blood in this, and we can rinse it again after, after we finish thinning it out. But overall, it looks really good. There's no huge chunks of meat on here that I'm going to need to take off any tendons or anything like that. So that looks good. There's no fat chunks or anything like that. So that looks good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my face and I'm going to lay it out. I've got it turned outside, outside, inside out, I should say. And I'm going to look at, there's no tears on my face, around my lips or nose. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and always have a nice a knife sharpener that you prefer. This I love these. These little, it's like two washers on a plastic stick. Anyways, these are great. I love these. And uh, just a couple of swipes. And... And I do that periodically just to make sure I keep my knife sharp. And I'm going to go ahead and start with opening up this nose. And you're going to feel this cartilage, this cartilage part right here, the septum. This is the septum of the nose right here. Now you can go ahead and sometimes I start with going ahead and kind of carving that off making that flush go ahead and take the septum off because we're going to rebuild a septum so we can we can go ahead and take that off okay so see now the septum is gone and now i'm going to pretty much butterfly and open up this nose for tanning to make sure that tanning penetrates those nostrils really well and I'm going to be, the purpose of this too, is going to be creating that tucking skin that I'm going to tuck that nose into the form when I go to rebuild that nose onto the form. So, I'm just going to be doing a little of my magic here. You can see all those connective fibers right there that really kind of hold on. And I'm just taking my knife and you can really, if you it, once you do this a lot, you can really see the lines that you're working. You'll start really being able to pick out and almost be able to do it in your sleep. I'm just kind of following the natural joint joints of. Let me scooch back here a little bit so you can see of where this is the the joint these fibrous tissues are joined here and I'm just going to keep lightly now you don't you just want to kindly lightly kind of scratch at it with your knife you don't want to do any hard pressing or stabbing down because you don't want to pop holes in this cape. Okay, that's huge because that's something you're going to have to go back and fix and so if you do so you want to try to be you know you'll you'll find out what how much pressure works for you it's all about doing this is kind of something for me it's just been mostly learning by doing you you learn a feel and what works for you I'm going to keep working around this. You can kind of see where the skin gathers and pinches together here around this, these nostrils. And I just kind of follow that natural line with my knife and it, in it, you barely touch it with your knife and it just starts peeling away and giving natural. Oh, I just made a new friend. So, You'll see how it, you'll know you're on the right spot when it just really kind of gives on its own and opens up nicely for you. And I always, a lot of, I know in school, 
the taxidermy, you know, they would tell us to put like a metal dowel or something in there to hold it open. Like I said, I like to use my hands for everything. It's probably why I cut myself a lot, but I like to use my hands because I am all about feeling and I can also feel how hard I'm pressing from the other side as well. And that's a, like a pretty good gauge for me. So I'm about to finish up this side and then we'll start working on the other side of the other nostril. So I've, I've kind of worked my way around that outside edge and now I'm going to come back where I've cut that septum off and that middle where that cartilage was for the septum. I'm going to come right down the middle there with my knife and cut that in half. I'm going to split that in half right there where that septum was. I'm going to run my knife down the middle of this and just open that wide open. So I'm just going to stick the tip of my knife in and I'm going to work down and open up that piece right there, that piece of cartilage. Start opening up. All right, see, and then I can continue on the back side. To keep Disconnecting those fibers, tissues on the back side of the nostril, really opening it up so it's going to lay flat on my form. As you can see, I've got that nose, that septum separated. It was like this, and you kind of butterfly it out, and everything's all separated. And that's how you do the nose, thin out the, turn out the nose, and all that's left there is cartilage it's ready for tan and this is what we'll be tucking into the form this skin here after we after it's tanned we'll thin that out and flush that out and that'll be our tucking skin next what we're going to do is start on the lips thinning out the lips turning them out so what because what we've got to do again is create some tucking skin for to tuck into our form so what I usually do is I start up here where we just did our nose and I've sharpened my knife again and where you'll see a seam, you can see it better on the side, where the lip curls over, that textured part of the lip curls over to the back side underneath. What I do is I slip, I kind of pinch it like this, fingers underneath and my thumb on top and I pinch it and I'm going to just kind of to make a starting incision to get that started. I do just like that. And I just start slowly working and then then I'm going to turn and I'm going to start now that I've already made a line. And this you can feel. I'm going to use my fingers on the back and my thumb and kind of push them together on the rim of that lip I can feel the rim of that lip there's like there's like a layer of fat there's fat in there especially once you start opening you'll know you're in the right spot because you'll see those that fat tissue start popping out 
you'll see that fatty tissue and you can feel it on the rim of the lip and that's what we're going down to now you don't want to go you just want to go down kind of score down far enough to where it starts feeling flat between your finger and your thumb to where it's going to feel like it's going to lay flat on the form you don't want to you this you're going to want to take your time and go slower especially if it's your first time doing it because you don't want to cut all the way through and make a big hole in your lip because then you'll have a big hole here that you'll have to sew up but see I'm I'm turning out that lip and this is the skin that will we will tuck into the form but you want to turn that out so you can give yourself some tucking skin and I'm just going to start working my way around once I get it started I can I can follow along that seam of the lip and just keep going around now this is the corner of the mouth so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back behind this piece of skin here and I'm gonna just kind of pop that up and keep doing the same thing Of course we won't need all that skin for tucking but we can cut that off after tan still just use I work all around using my finger and my thumb as a guide to find that seam and just scoring it and working all along that seam and I'll Keep, if you notice, I keep backtracking and going back because I just keep feeling and feeling. If I feel a spot that I kind of didn't do as well, I'll go back. You want to open all that up. Okay, so now I've worked my way around the one side. I've done the top, the one side, and now I've gotten to the bottom lip and as you can see it has a pretty good overhang on the inside here and I'm just going to this is where you're just working your way because this is all your tucking skin here and you're going to be taking your knife and working you kind of want to fold it over like that and you're just continuing to work on working loose those connective tissues because we're breaking free see you can already tell it's coming loose because this this flap right here will be tucking into your form and I'm just going to keep continuing to work down to the inside you can feel from the inside you can see that fatty tissue start opening up and that's when you know you're on the right see that how it just splits right open I barely touch it with my knife and that's the bottom lip the fat inside the bottom lip that you're seeing right there Okay, you can clearly see, now that I've got that uh, bottom lip fully opened up, you can see all that fat tissue in there, that fatty tissue. And see now that bottom lip, and I could even go just a little bit more to take that ledge off of it. But see, that's, that's your tucking skin. That's that bottom lip getting opened up. Now you can see I've got the lip totally turned out. I've scored all the rim of the lip on the inside and turned out all the skin all the way around the mouth. So now I have nice smooth edges all the way around the edge of the mouth and I've got plenty of skin for tucking 
into the form when I go to mount. And everything's going to be good and opened up and exposed for tan. Now I'm ready to move on to my eyes. This is what the skin on the inside of the eye looks like. And I, all I'm going to do is go around that edge, and this skin's already pretty loose. I can tell when they caped it out in the field that they were pretty aggressive. I mean, it's pretty already pretty much it's got some holes in it, but that's okay, because remember, this is going to be tucked into the form. And all I'm kind of going to do is go along. I'm going to put my two fingers inside the eye socket, the eye hole, like that. And I'm just going to take my knife. I'm going to find the, the rim of that eyelid. And I'm going to pull up with my thumb a little bit of that loose skin. And that's going to create extra. And I'm going to just kind of lightly go along where I feel like that eyelid is underneath. Now this you're gonna to wanna to be very careful of. And I keep going until you're gonna see here in just a minute, once I keep slowly and gradually just kind of working away at that, those thin layers of membrane there, I can feel that eyelid underneath there. There's going to be, in the, in the eyelid, there's going to be a little rim of fat. You can just now, you're just now starting to see it. Now that I've thinned away, thinned away. Now I'm gonna be extra careful because this eyelid skin is pretty thin. And I don't know if you necessarily, everybody has to do this. This was my instructor's technique. He always liked to open up and get that eyelid fat out of there. But you'll see that rim, it starts showing up a white line. You'll see that white line underneath the skin. And I just kind of faint, just very lightly run my knife over that thin that eyelid that starts showing up underneath. Keep thinning that out. And the top eyelids are a lot thinner and this one's getting really thin and I think I'm going to stop there because like I said this was already pulled apart. I'm going to flip around to the bot. Well, this is actually the top lid and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull it up with my thumb because see that's going to pull and kind of give me more tucking skin to work with and I'm just going to keep lightly running my knife over to separate. And that's going to give me plenty of skin to tuck with. In the corner of this eye, I can feel that the tear duct is still there in, this one's still intact in this eye, in the corner of this eye. So what I do is I come up underneath it and I'm going to release that and that's going to become part of see it's it's like a really hard uh it's like I guess it's cartilage because it sure feels tough like cartilage and I'm just going to continue and see how it gets really thin there but I'm at the end and there was already holes here, so I've reached where the end was. Like I said, they were pretty aggressive with, I guess, caping out this deer. They didn't pull it far enough away from the eye. But I've reached the corner of that eye, so now I'm going to stop. But that's how you just kind of turn, turn over 
that uh, tear duct and it becomes part of that pocket, your tucking skin. So you can see I've turned out this, this lid all the way to the inside of the eyelid. See, like I said, you can see that line, that fat inside. That's how you know you're on the eyelid. And you don't want to cut down because then you're going to start tearing that. But so that's where I've turned it all the way down to the eyelid and given myself plenty of skin for tucking. We're moving on to the ears now. Last step of turning out our cape before we get it into tan. Like I mentioned before, they really butchered the ear bases on these ears. So that's gonna make some work. See that whole ear base, the bulb, that's usually on the bottom of this ear has been completely cut off. They cut it way too short when they were cutting the, the ears from the skull. So anyways, it's not the end of the world. We're still gonna, we'll be able to, when I bond over the ears and when I, when I, attach it to the form with clay we'll be able to build all that up and we'll just really have to build up those ear bases with clay when we go to mount it so what i do is i turn it out and i really hold this tight and get some tension on it and then you can really see where the cartilage is and all these connective tissue all these connective fibers and i'm going to start scratching away with them and loosen it up. I'm gonna start this way, and then I have ear spreaders that I'm gonna come in and help me with some of the work as well. But I'm gonna, and I can already, I know these are lodged ear. It's not this ear. Well, there is one in this ear. You can see these ears were tagged. Okay, they had tags in them because it came from a lodge. So there's going to be scar tissue there. I'm probably going to have to open up this whole side of the ear here to make sure I get that good and open because of that hole they popped in the ear. This is probably all going to be scar tissue, so it's going to be hard to open up. And I'm going to get that open and because we've got to open up this ear to turn it inside out for tanning so that the, it, the tan penetrates and gets all in these ears. And then we've got to have them nice, a nice pocket formed for when we bondo. But I can already tell you, we're going to have to make a patch for this ear because it has tag holes in it. And I think, yep, both the ears have tag holes. So I already know, and that's part of the inspection process when you're inspecting your capes before I, I already I so now I know what to expect when I'm working on them so like I said pull it tight and I'm just gonna kind of go ahead and start some of these bigger connective tissues down here at the bottom I'm gonna open them up so I can get my ear spreaders in there easily and start tearing prying it open. So I've made a little pocket right here in this one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can order these off of McKenzie. These are your ear spreaders, your large ear spreaders. There's there's ones for smaller animals, smaller mammals too, too that are about half this size, but these are my big, my large ear spreaders. And if I push them up in there and kind of hold it down like this, and give it a squeeze, you can really hear, it's really actually satisfying. I love this part. But you can really hear, if you listen, you can hear those fibers really tearing. It sounds like it's just coming apart. And then I just keep working up my spreaders and keep going. Now something to keep in mind, once you start getting to the close to those edges or those tips, you want to go very carefully or even stop. Like once you get a quarter inch or a half a half an inch to the edge, 
uh, when I was first beginning, I'd stop before I got too close to the edge and just turn it out and thin it out by hand because I can't tell you how many ears I just, I get a little crazy with the ear spreaders. I'm like, man, this is really easy. It makes the job easier. And, and then they just poop, they blow wide open. Not a big deal because you can just sew it back shut, but it will happen. And more than likely, and sometimes, see, I'm getting close to the edge. And even when you know what you're doing, sometimes they just, if there's scar tissue and stuff, sometimes they'll still just pop open. Don't be surprised while making this video if all of a sudden you see my spreaders pop out the top. Oh well, I'll have to sew it. I can fix it, so I'm not that worried about it. But I know, I can see there's a scar right here, so I can, I know what it feels like when I can feel like it's starting to tear. There's... There's a different feel and a different sound. Like I said, it's just something you have to do, do over and over again, and you just learn from doing it. When I when it's when it's given too much, and I'm just gonna keep working around that edge all the way down. I go all the way down here in the pocket. Because remember, you're gonna want your tan and your bondo to be able to penetrate. All these are now I've gotten to the to that uh, tag hole and it's not gonna let that scar tissue in there. It's not gonna let me. So just be prepared if my if I have to split it, I have to split it, but I'll have to sew it. There it goes. It just gave. I'm trying not trying to do be as gentle as I can without tearing my whole ear open. But, and I'm going, so I'm going to work all the way around, and then I, I got that, that tag hole to give a little bit, so I'm going to leave it, leave it like that for now, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to start turning, see, it's all popped loose, and now I can turn that ear inside out, and now you can see what it looks like, that's that tag hole. So once I've pretty much got my edges turned out and everything turned out, of course, remember we're missing the base of this ear, but I can go in and start helping. I, I stick my spreaders on the inside and I just kind of give it a little squeeze, 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 gentle, 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 because remember I don't want to tear that tip open, so I'm just kind of gently and then... I feel with my fingers and I can feel the tip of that ear isn't completely opened up yet. So I will come in with my knife and manually help turn out the rest of that ear. And you can keep your spreaders in there if that helps you see that seam better. And that's all we're doing. Oh, and see, I reached the tip of the ear, but that's okay. If you always, if you get a little, little tip, if it pops open like that, remember we can either, we can patch that. We're just gonna make sure everything's opened for good, well enough. Honestly, the tips of the ears, since they're so thin. I usually just leave them just like this because they're so fresh and so soft that, you know, you're really going to risk either tearing it or popping a hole in it or something like that. I usually wait till after tan because the tanning process really thickens up this skin and makes it a whole lot easier to work with. And I'll even be able to come back after it's tanned. And not only use my knife and open it up even a little bit more to that edge, but I'll even be able to just hold it on each end and kind of pull it and you and it'll tear. I'll be able to gently work it. You can see even doing it like this. You can see how it, it'll pull apart. If you gently do that after it's tanned, you can work those 
manually work those edges open even better. And it's just, to me, it's a whole lot easier to work with and worry-free after it's been tanned. But because the skin is just thicker and easier to work with. Right now, it's just so thin and so soft and delicate. You just risk tearing it further. So I'm going to leave it alone for now and, and do the other ear and we're going to get it into tan. Now we have our ears done. That was the last, last step. We had, we did our nose, got our nose turned out, our lips turned out. Oh, there's a piece of the nose, the septum. Our eyes and our ears. So, and that was Kitana getting frisky out there, chasing flies, which we do have a lot of flies in here because we're in the barn today because uh, it's better lighting and so we can keep the messy stuff outside instead of in the shop. So just so you know, another helpful tip is these pads right here, these gray pads, these are like those shop pads for like that absorb oil or get, or, you know, stuff like that. I use them. I steal them from my husband and I use them to put on my table under my cape because you can see they're great and absorbent. Not only do they keep my work surface clean, but any blood or liquid or water or anything like that, it keeps it out of my workplace, off of me, off of me. And it's just a great way to keep your workspace clean. So now that we've finished prepping our hide for tan, and I've already checked it over, over and other than like a little piece of meat here and there, which is nothing to work about, worry about unless you had a huge chunk like that that's going to keep that crotan from penetrating your cape. I mean, of course, we'd like flay that off. But, I mean, this looks great. Other than the person who caped this out at the lodge did a great job other than completely butchering my ear bases, um, which I'm going to have to fix. But everything else looks really good. We're ready to get it into tan. So we're going to take this now over to our tote where we have some fresh croton mixed up. And we're going to start dunking it in and give it a bath and agitate it and mix it around. Make sure it's all penetrated. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you now, I always make sure once I go to put the lid on, I always make sure it's hair side up. Okay, not skin side up, hair side up. Um, again, some people put weights on it, the weight plates or whatever on to hold it down. I don't bother with any of that. I just go ahead every couple of days or once a week or something, I'll go in there and agitate it and mix it around and make sure it's getting all covered. And, and since this one does have longer hair, it's a lodge deer, so it's been well fed and has had plenty of nutrients. It's got longer hair and a real nice thick coat. So it is go I'm going to keep this one in no less than two weeks just to make sure that I don't have any slippage or any chance of this coat being where I want that tan to penetrate all the way through. Thank you for watching us here at KNC Taxidermy. Remember to like and subscribe us here on YouTube and join us next time for our latest creation. And we'll see you then.